The fear of environmental doom is weighing on the minds of Americans as Cl Climate Week begins in New York City. Some are looking for a way to secure the future. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Tamson Fidel. And I'm Erin E. LeBeau. Now, researchers coined the term eco anxiety to describe chronic or severe anxiety related to our relationship with the environment. Now, according to a 2018 survey, 70% of people in the U.S. are worried about climate change and more than half feel helpless. Yeah, Heather White is the author of the book One Green Thing, and she's back with us with some suggestions to help ease that anxiety. Nice to have you back. Thank you so much, Erin and Tamson. It's a pleasure to be back to talk about this important issue. Yeah, so let's describe how do you define eco-anxiety? What is it and why is it on the rise? Such a great question. The American Psychological Association calls it the chronic fear of environmental doom. And more and more people, especially young people, are having anxiety based on what they are experiencing and seeing with global warming. In 2021, just last year, last September, there was a survey of 10,000 young people ages 16 through 25 one out of four don't want to have children of their own because they're so worried about the future they're inheriting. And almost half, 47%, said that climate anxiety interferes with their daily life. Mm, wow. Colleges are actually starting to, act, to have counseling programs based on the concern that young people have, especially. Okay, so what are some ways that we can kind of ease some of this eco anxiety? The first thing you can do is make time and listen. Listen to young people, ask them how they're feeling. The second is to spend time in nature. What we're trying to protect is actually what can restore us. The third is journal. If you know someone also who at climate anxiety is interfering with their daily life, reach out to the Climate Psychology Alliance or the Climate Psychiatry Alliance. And then in my book, I offer what I call kind of an Enneagram or a Myers-Briggs for service. It's called the Service Superpower Assessment, where you can find out what your strengths are and how you show up for the people you love. And then I match you to a daily practice of sustainability. Mm -hmm. I call it a one green thing. You do one green thing each day to ease your anxiety and shift the culture Culture, which is what we need for these big climate solutions to work. And, in that, and we're talking about that, but everybody can get involved with that, with being more sustainable. Some of the small changes that people can bring to their daily lives, what are those? It's such a, that's such an important point. And yes, the small changes you make, whether it's skipping the straw, composting, taking a bike or walking instead of, or public transit instead of driving, um, thinking about making a big purchase like uh, a, an electric car, uh, also just being more energy efficient at home. These practices all matter because you are a cultural change agent. You are sending a signal to your family, to your friends that this is important to you and you know that you're making a difference. And sometimes we forget how important our individual actions are and how they can create a ripple effect. So the big, big solutions that we've seen this you know, new announcement on billions of dollars, $369 billion invested in climate solutions. It can only work if we're all doing our part and we're all welcoming these solutions. Okay, so today is the first day of Climate Week here in New York City, which actually coincides with the UN General Assembly for more than a decade. Why is that important? It's important because for 14 years, we have made sure that Climate Week has global policy leaders, business leaders, and the United Nations all focused on solutions for climate change. And we've had very exciting announcements last week. We saw the CEO of Patagonia turning over his company to climate action. He says that Earth is his shareholder now. We're expecting other big commitments from huge brands and global leaders as part of the United Nations. So the mission is to drive these climate solutions and drive them fast. There's more than 500 events that are happening around the world, but the focus is here in New York City. I'm at Clinton Global Initiative. It was so exciting to hear all of the, the commitments and the excitement around strong, fast climate action. Yeah, let's talk about some of those. There have been some big wins on the climate front in D.C. as well. Talk about the bill that Congress just passed. The, the Inflation Reduction Act is a huge victory. It's a transformational moment here in the United States. $369 billion to climate solutions, everything from tax credits to energy efficiency credits, excuse me, energy efficiency credits to support for climate justice, for electric cars, for infrastructure for electric cars. It is an important, important moment for us. We still need more though. Mm -hmm. And what we need is we all need to know that we have an important role to play. You don't need a PhD to be part of the climate movement. Every Everyone is welcome. Everyone is needed because we together can create a beautiful future for the next generation. All right. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining us today.
it's my pleasure. Thanks so much. All right, and to take Heather's assessment to find your service superpower, go to onegreenthing.org, and you can find more information about Climate Week by going to climateweeknyc.org.